things absorb through the skin. It's called transdermal absorption. So let's take a look at this. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And we've been talking about this, um, you know, from a toxicity perspective, like a, you know, if we put something on the skin or if something lands on the skin, it, it will potentially make its way into the bloodstream. So we have to be aware and careful of what we get exposed to. But we also know that that can be a useful tool uh, like in, in uh, you know, drug patches and things. They're, so nowadays they're using that concept or using that phenomena to deliver medications through the skin and it's called transdermal absorption. And you know, you can look that up and find out that there's a lot of, a lot of science and a lot of effort being put toward delivery mechanisms. And they're discovering that there's a layer underneath the skin that is really very powerful to, to prevent things from getting through and it actually metabolizes. There's a layer there that metabolizes things uh, you know, so it even starts to chew things up before it gets into the bloodstream. I mean, it's just kind of a, a mini uh, version of the liver, if you will, um, that, that it obviously if something gets into the bloodstream, it bypasses the digestive tract. It doesn't get metabolized by the liver. It doesn't get broken down by the stomach. So we have no other protection. So actually we do. The skin has amazingly this layer right underneath that is um, is responsible or, or is now being evaluated to for its ability to uh, starting start to metabolize, start to oxidize, start to put these things uh, and break them down and, and neutralize them if they're toxic. But it doesn't. It's not foolproof. Okay. Well, so what's interesting to me is that here we have this data and documentation in the literature, and in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a paper here uh, that I've got off the internet that we've known since 1967. Okay, this is, the, I didn't, I have not done an extensive literature search, I just found a reference from 1967, okay, 50 years ago, that we've known that things tr uh, absorb through the skin. Uh, and in fact, they knew before that because this particular paper is titled, regional variation in percutaneous penetration of C14 cortisol in man. In other words, they're studying the cortisol and getting cortisol through the skin. And they, uh, of course, they did it through a radioactive isotope to be able to trace it. Um, and then, uh, you know, not very pleasant for the, for the recipients. But anyway, that's kind of how they used to do things. I don't think they do as much of that anymore. But uh, regional variation, what does that mean? Regional variation, which means depends on where you put it right where you put it on the body it's going to it's going to penetrate in, in a different rate okay and so this was this was a really nice study i've seen uh i think it's it's i haven't found all the research on this but like i said i found this one and i was going to you know continue working and tracking it down because this was done on males and i wanted to find the the one that was done on females I haven't found that one yet i know it exists uh, because they they did another one that included breast tissue uh and the female genitalia or labia um, but basically what we're looking at here is the data shows that the, basically the bottom of the foot is the, the, one of the least absorbent areas. In fact, the heel was almost non-absorbent. Uh, so this is for an adult male. Um, and, and I think it's, it's true for an adult female. Uh, as, the, as you get younger and younger, I think the feet are going to be less and less thick because you haven't walked as many years on them. So you can expect that for babies and infants, uh, this is going to be different, a different kind of story. So the idea that um, the, the transdermal absorption, it, you know, it hasn't been studied on babies as far as I know. Um, and, and if it, if it has, I, I'm excited to go look it up, but I mean, I think that we need to be much more aware of it. The thing is we have been aware of it. One thing that frustrates me about this is that here is this knowledge, 50 years of knowledge that we are absorbing things through the skin. And yet the FDA continues to approve, has approved and continues to approve, uh, uh, chemicals for everyday use that we are going to become in contact with without transdermal uh, uh, absorption studies are not required. Okay. The, uh, and so I'm like going, wait a minute, how is it that we're getting uh, recall notices on baby products for, for cancer, uh, you know, being linked to cancer. And we didn't know this already in 50 years, we've known things absorbed through the skin. So how in the world have we made it this far and not uh, and not added that to the public safety component. Now, here's another a level of frustration is 
you know, we have things like essential oils and have documentation in the literature that essential oils absorb through the skin, okay, and, and can show you the literature on that, and yet we're not allowed to talk about the benefit of essential oils tr delivered transdermally. So for, drug companies can look at it and say, hey, well, we can deliver uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hormones or medications through the skin and it gets into the bloodstream and, and, and so therefore we can discuss the effectiveness of, of taking the drug by putting it on the skin, but yet even though the data is absolutely clear and the research is absolutely clear, the FDA restricts us from saying that we can affect the body by putting the essential oil on the skin. I'm like, oh wow, okay. But the problem with that is, okay, fine, you're trying to restrict us from, from uh, you know, you don't want us to make any claims and everything, I get that. Um, but we also is a safety problem. If you're not gonna acknowledge that essential oils, for example, essential oils don't get through the skin, then what difference does it make if a pregnant woman dumps 50, 50 uh, uh, bottles of essential oil on her body all at once? Shouldn't make any difference because there's no threat. Because, no, obviously, obviously that would be a bad idea. There is a threat, there is a danger. So on the one side, we have to talk about a safety, safe use of essential oils topically. And then on the other side, we, but we can't talk about effective use of essential oils topically. Now, I'm like, oh, one, one, one or the other, guys. But because there is a safety issue, we do need to talk about this, okay? So I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, if you're gonna come after me for compliance, I'm like, well, wait a minute, I need to talk about the safe use of essential oils. And so uh, this, this becomes relevant. Let me talk about this. So the foot. If we count the foot as the, as the baseline of the least absorbent, then we go up from there and say, well, what, how, how absorbent is the rest of the body? So the ankle is three times more absorbent than the foot. The palm, the hand, right? So that's actually when we put the oils on and we put them just even rubbing them on our, on our palm, uh, the, we have, and, and I'm, now this is, now to be fair, let's be clear. This is cortisol delivered with acetone that's actually gonna be probably fairly similar to an essential oil in absorption, okay? This is why I find this totally relevant. So in my opinion, without looking for, for a lot more studies on this, I think this is gonna be a fairly similar delivery mechanism as essential oils because they're small aromatic compounds that, that will mimic this kind of delivery. Okay, so um, that's my professional scientific opinion, um, which I think I'm still entitled to, I'm not sure though. Um, okay, so palm, the palm is about six, 5.9 times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot. The back is 12 times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot, so which means it's twice as absorbent as the palm, okay? Uh, the scalp, right, the scalp, and I guess it might depend on, on how many hair follicles you have, uh, because they anticipated that, this, that because the hair follicles are gonna get more absorption, so I guess the thicker the hair, they might get better absorption. Um, the scalp is 25 times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot, which means four times more than the palm. The axilla, the armpit, is uh, 25.7, so almost the same as the, as the, uh, the scalp. Uh, we have the um, forehead, right, being 42.9 times more absorbent than the foot, uh, again, which gets to seven times more absorbent than the palm. The jaw angle, right, the jaw angle, I guess uh, they include, you know, I don't know whether, I mean, the angle seems to be this, why they suddenly decided to put it here, uh, I won't quite know, except they maybe they already knew at a time, but that's 92.9 times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot. And the scrotum, and again, this, is, this was done on males, but this has been done, I, I believe this has been repeated for females, and, and it shows similar, the 300 times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot. Now, what does that mean? Okay, uh, and they're actually, um, you know, what that means is that if you have something that is going next to your genitals, okay, i.e. fabric softener in your underwear, uh, or, or detergent or, or uh, you know, d uh, toxic substances that are in your clothes from your detergents, fabric, uh, fabric softener and um, you know, dyes, perfumes, those kind of things, chemicals that are in your cleaning solutions, and you're putting them next to your genitals, 300 times more absorbent. 
So basically our genitals are getting toxified much faster than anywhere else, okay? Uh, that I imagine that goes right in. Um, and so this is something to, here's the paper, here's the, de de I'll give you the link uh, on, the, on the description that you can go and look this up, 1967. 1967, the Journal of Investigative Dermatology. Okay, so um, it's, uh, it's well known, folks. We've known this for a long time, and uh, here it is. So, um, not that we can talk about it, but I should be, it should be able to talk about precautions. Careful about where you put your essential oils, because you're gonna get a lot more absorption of your essential oils on, your, on your, the a line of a jaw and, um, and on your, your private parts then you are on the bottom of the foot, okay? So um, if you're talking about uh, you know, putting essential oils on, uh, where you put them does matter in terms of how much they absorb into the skin. Only talking about it from a safety perspective. Uh, you know, not that that would be useful information, okay? Uh, just from a safety perspective. So if you're wanting to be careful about how much essential oil gets into your body, you've gotta be careful about where you put them. Um, and it looks like the forearm, uh, where I typically will put uh, essential oils and rub them on so that I can smell them, only so that I can smell them. Uh, and so I'll rub it on, I'll take my, um, so here's some eucalyptus globulus, it's, it is a cosmetic product, and I will put, you know, uh, four or five drops and rub it like this. I like to do it this way in an application, essential oils wise in particular because I don't, I don't get it on my hands and you know, later on if I touch my eyes or pick my nose or something like that, then I don't get that, uh, you know, that effect up where I don't want it. So I, I put that on and I rub it on like this. So according to, according to this research, um, the absorption of such, a compound, such compounds as would be in the, the uh, essential oil, which I would want to be worried about getting too much, uh, that the forearms are seven times more absorbent than the bottom of the foot. Uh, and so that might not be a bad place to put it because it's not, uh, it's not 300 times, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to overdose myself on the arms. Or I could just stick with the bottom of the feet uh, if I wanted very little absorption. Um, so, you know, anyway, just be aware of that transdermal absorption does depend on where you put it. And that has implications for usage of topical products, all topical products, whether you're concerned about, I mean, mostly, of course, mostly we're talking about toxicity concerns, so careful where you put things. Okay, uh, and that's basically my message for today, and I'll give you that link, like I said, to this paper. Uh, and I'll, I'll, there's the issue of transdermal absorption is, is very exciting, actually, um, and I wish the, uh, the, we could talk about it from a usefulness standpoint in the context of essential oils, but that is outside of our compliance rules. I do feel obliged, like I said, to talk about safety. All right, happy wellness.